feel, man? Loving life, man. Living life, man. Just as expected, you know. Diamond stay blessed in, you know. Yeah, living life, yeah. man. For sure, for sure. I, I fuck with it, man. So like, just getting started, can you just tell the fans and supporters at, um, at least where your name came from exactly and how you how it came about? For sure. I mean, Jody Biggs, I mean, Mr. Biggs. It's something of an anomaly, man. Where that name came from, man, it was just blessed before it was even up for the test. I ain't studied for it, so. Yeah. Jody, man, that's my real name, man, Joseph, but it's a combination of both my first middle name. And Biggs, I mean, one day I was just thinking to myself, man, I'm gonna take this industry on fire, man. So what's the most fire shit you got? You got a big, so shit, we live like big. And everybody was just saying lit, lit, lit type yeah, shit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, fuck it up for the one time, fuck it up. No, I definitely, I feel for you, man. So how long have you been doing music exactly? Shit, I've been recording since I was about like 16, 17, so going on about like 13 years. So okay, like 18, uh, 12, 13 years, man. So what age or what grade would you say you started rapping? Shit. Alright, so Lil Troy actually was an inspiration of why why I started to rap. Lil Troy? Lil Troy, oh, man. Right. I don't know if y'all man, y'all yeah. too young for this, but I mean, you yeah, know, wanna, wanna be a baller. baller yeah, so yeah, I can't yeah, feel yeah. me. We all about the same age. You feel me? So just being a kid, you know, just growing up, I was just always writing, like I always wrote, write, write, write. So I say about like the second or third grade, I was just starting writing, like actual like two pattern bars on a little yellow pad, and I just, I ain't think nothing was gonna come from it ever, cause I never really was, you know, serious about the shit. But I mean, it, when it caught on, it's definitely, definitely straight out of there, man. It wasn't no looking back. So that's the way I look at it. I was like. Every grade, I just graduated and graduated, yeah. so. So were you rapping in, um, what you say, elementary or middle school? Shit, honestly, I didn't start really rapping real, like, bars or freestyling until I was, like, in high school, to be real, man. Awesome. I didn't even want to, like, I mean, because, I mean, not that I was nervous or shy, it was just that, like, it was just always in the back of my mind, like, these niggas ain't, what the shit I'm on is, like, even extraterrestrial type mm -hmm. shit. So, like, me saying it that young, I'm like, okay. He don't know what the fuck he talking about. He ain't never lived that life, but I seen it like through like family members and different yeah. type people in like situations. So that's where like it's just the stories just as they accumulated in high school. I was like, okay, I got a story to tell. So. Hey, you from the H? Yeah, yeah. Born and raised Southwest, Southwest side, man, North side a little bit. Beach Nine Gessner, That's all I know. Okay. So. Yeah, South Side of Houston, man. Yeah, Zersky, man. Born and raised, man. I mean, I love the H. I love the city. I don't know if that shit is reciprocal, but I mean, shit, fuck it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all love. It's organic when you really look at the pattern of people and you just, you, gra you gravitate and you manifest. So I think that the love is just, it, Houston is a hard city. It's a blue collar city. So it's still like, you kind of really get, it's almost like Tennessee or like, you really got to like grind into that. Like, so, um, well, I wanted to ask, um, mm. as far as Houston, what's your favorite part about being from Houston? Shit, the food. Gotta love the food. The food for definitely shit, sure. I mean, of course, the women, <laughs> weed, weather, all that shit, man. I mean, it's it's a pretty lit city, man. I mean, it's laid back, chill, man. People, you know, it, it, it's almost like it kind of got that country feel because people still like, you know, they dab you up, piece you up all the time. So it's that, it's that love. Yeah, so the hospitality. Yeah, hospitality, man. It's just that genuine, like, that, that do it to it fluid that everybody just, it kind of like, if you ain't got it on to it, it's gonna be syncopated into your DNA some kind of way. You eat the food, you're gonna be ingrained to it. You already a Houstonian. If you, you know, you chill with politic with a couple of, you know, a couple of elders, a couple of OGs, you're already into it. You know, you already drifted into it. So that's what I love about the city. No, definitely. Um, speaking of the city, you know, you got a lot of people that come to Houston specifically for jewelry. You got Johnny Dan, you got Emmy, you know, you got a lot of big jewelry. So, <laughs> yes, sir. So, just, just, just talking about the um, jewelry side of things, do you feel like, you need the big diamonds and jewelry to stand out as an artist. Fuck no, man. I, I, can I say that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck no, man. You do not need it. Man, I just put on, man, literally, I was literally on a no chain campaign, man. I was yeah. like nowhere, no goddamn chains in 2021, but I was like, you know what? Like the kids, they see this shit like superhero shit. Cause really this shit, like this shit, the, the jewelry, the, the cars, the clothes, the swag, all that shit, the drip. Is is all in you? Like it's really what you make of it. Like yeah, you could yeah. still pick up a lot of tracks and just by just wearing a play. You only had to wear teachers pump throwing a flannel. Fuck hey, it, just hey. do what you want to do. It's whatever. See, Cole said that. That's why Cole don't wear. You know he don't wear designs. Yeah, but you don't need it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not necessary. I mean, people think like once you get into a whole like it's like a checklist with like you know the rap 
kid, the rapper's kid or whatever. Yeah, the rapper's kid. <laughs> you gotta have your rapper's kid. And I'm like, well, shit. I mean, when I get to it, like, cause when I accumulated, I didn't like do this shit for the rap shit. I did this shit because like, it's in my culture. It's it's or it's like the same organicness that you you kind of manifest. It comes back to you. And you put it on. So I, you might catch me with a Libra chain because I'm a Libra. You might catch me with the Bix chain because I mean the Bix is lit. Or you might catch me with a goddamn evil eye chain. campaign. <laughs> but uh, jewelry man, it's for me though. It's like it's like my cake. It's literally like just put on the cake. Got gotcha, you. Gotcha. No, that makes sense though, man. So, uh, just being in the industry, what's some things that you say that you learned, um, just from you know individuals in general teaching you? Yeah, ah. Uh, or one of the biggest lessons, or you know, concepts that you learned about the industry. Shit, man, that's a great ass question, man. What I learned from the industry is, uh, somebody taught me, or I, I shit, I wouldn't even say somebody taught me. Somebody gave me some good advice recently that was just about you know staying consistent. I think, you know, being somebody that's been like putting in the grind for like 12 years of like independent, just self-releasing. I mean, I remember when this shit was just SoundClick exactly. and like exactly. Reverb Nation type shit. I literally come from the generation before SoundCloud. So when it was on the SoundCloud, it was like, it wasn't really the same like patterns. Like YouTube was still in like infancy, like Facebook, Twitter, like Instagram. I feel like I'm dinosaurs kind of talking on this shit, but it's like, it's like, not as many school when you think about like to how like, that 2014 kind of bubble kind of like it gapped off and by 2016 shit you put one song you stream a mill off soundcloud psh, boom bada but exactly. like now with the industry man it just told me like adaptability consistency and that adaptability yeah, yeah. and just trying to yeah, like yeah. you know when you get that real pattern that wave crack the code that algorithm is right there you just got to keep grinding putting in that work yeah, speaking, yeah. speaking of algorithm and I want to get big on social media. Like, how do you feel? Like, how much do you need an artist needs social media to get big in the game? Shit, not really that much, man. You just really gotta like. For me, I think like people are so. I'm trying to like push back the regression. I'm trying to do the regression of social media because really, I come from the '90s where this shit was like a truck. I'm trying to like incorporate like what's the DNA of, you know, that underground but still like cracking that notch so like with social media yes it's essential but it's not like quintessential it's not the most yeah. like all do and do you still gotta have the talent and i think that's what a lot of people get confused about is like yeah you got these you know these drill tiktok rappers like switching up old school samples and it's lit i love it i got plenty of songs that y'all really for real for a fuck with your boy it's on there but it's like that's not the if you don't have like like and even like with just the pattern of like social media like you don't have to be all too into it because i think with like where you had like the people who was just so uh, like back to back with it. Like you don't have like the artists like Kendrick that like take like a couple of years back and be like, yo, he ain't always on. You saying quality over quantity. That's it. Yeah, you exactly. feel me? And then like when you really get to that, like you can always balance that qualitative factor. The quantity is going to keep right back up with it. You could keep on going da 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 da, but still that you can't like break off from what's pure, what's quality, what's really driven towards your analytics. And, People, I feel like they're starting to get over to what the, you know, the social media influencers and the real artists are nowadays. So. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. My next question would be, if there was something about the industry that you could change, what would it be? <sighs> Man, shit, do we, do we got time? Is yeah, this we got time. Go. We got time. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, yeah, Man, yeah. Um, I got, I don't know if I touched on, on it earlier, but like, motherfucking, Reciprocity, man. I mean, I feel like people, I mean, people are gonna be people. That's nature. But I mean, when it comes to like, if we're applying as artists consistency, then that should be it given back to us. This should be retribu retribution towards that. And what I mean by that is like, if you say you're gonna fuck with me, that's what I'm like trying to really get my bicky heads to be about. Cause like, my fans really do fuck with me. It's like, if you, like, don't be a fair weather, like, fan. Like, don't say you wanna support, and then, like, the next, like, minute, I hit you up, and it's like, dry as fuck. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't like about it. It's like, a lot of people, like, they'll give you that face value type shit, and they be, like, saying to you, like, ah, uh, like, yeah, I'ma repost. Like, it don't cost to, to, to pay. I just tweeted that the other day. Like, it don't cost to, like, motherfucking uh, support. support. You know, like, it just shouldn't. You feel me? It's just a like, a repost, or like, or, 
shit tapping like, hey, what you doing this weekend? I got this seminar going. You should hit it up. It's a lot of investors, a lot of you know people to network with. It's like I get the emphasis of networking, but at the same token, it's like it comes with it kind of comes with a price tag. You kind of got to pay to play. You got to kind of like. It, even if you ain't playing yourself, you gotta like kind of like maneuver within yourself. Like, okay, like I see where this person is going. They probably not gonna rock with the mo movement like wholeheadedly because my like the way I'm going is a different path. So like I see you at the top, but it's like I would wish that we would all come together as a market, as an industry. It's a little bit more like okay, I got faith in this person. Let me like really care about like where this person is trying to get to. to where it, when it comes to getting to the bag, and I feel like independent artists has that biggest struggle is like okay, how do I transition into being an artist and being a businessman, a business acumen, being stronger to my management information, and how do I build systems to where my children can have generational wealth and all the, all the A to Z's, man, it just goes yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah. I was gonna say, because, uh, you know, people say Atlanta, the mm -hmm. artists yeah. incubating out of there. Everybody, like, shows love. Like, yeah. I, I think that's what, at Loud, man, everybody was saying, like, damn, like, it feels like kind of like a piece of Atlanta because like Atlanta yeah. is so for their people. Like their artists, they treat them like like literally like 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 you hear about like from, from Outcast all the way to Lil Baby. They all was in one dungeon just working together. Literally, to what I can't you can't even say future without having a future conversation. Hey. You feel me? Because it's like the past fifteen years, dude, literally been that dude. So it's like okay, I see like you know even like shit like people from Florida, man, or like even like. You know the yaks are like, are like anybody like correspondent is like, man, they really stick up for Florida, or they yeah. stick up for South Memphis, or they stick up for you know South South where the fuck they from. But it's like if they fall off, they not gonna be like, oh, where the fuck he at? Like, nah, he cooking up. He's still in the dungeon. He's still you know getting that that motion potion together. But like, right, right. Well, like honestly, I ain't gonna even stunt. And this is what I don't like about my city is that like they don't really like. Our attention span is like that. Like one minute we on some shit, the next minute some nigga from Detroit, and the next nigga is like from Ohio or some like you know out of nowhere space, and then it's like damn, we giving so much love to everybody else, but people from age. Yeah, yeah, film that's really it, into this shit, like grew up into this shit, like went through all the like everything, like it's like it's it's not reciprocated. Yeah, it's, it's real because we always talk about that. Um, the Houston talent, we got a big pool of talent. Of course. From Travis, Inter Meg, Beyonce, all the way down, because we know artists. Uh, International, yeah. Get, get the man, uh, Mona Leo. Mona Leo, yes, sir. A lot of artists. Erica, I want to say Erica, Erica Banks, Banks. Banks. yeah. We, we, we keep going in Houston, but like you said, like we, we missing that part where we could just be bigger than what we are. Like Atlanta rappers, we know Atlanta rappers we never even seen before. Never even seen before. And, then, and the, the factor it is, is like really, it's just influential. Like, I feel like the talent, I ain't gonna even stunt, it's, it's kind of becoming like liquidated because people is like, they trying to get that fast, quick buck. They trying to get that number one billboard. So it's like, they're not really invested into the time. It's, like artist development, I feel like it shouldn't be so like run down to where it's like, we want to get these like manufactured artists to where they're not even like, comprehending what's coming at them like the lifestyle the 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 the, the pace of it the, the the adaptability of it it's just it's not all there and it's not that we really need artist development if you're an artist you're an artist before you even was <laughs> calling yourself an artist really what the exactly. fuck is that exactly. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like what is an artist yeah, development? yeah you already got it like at any age and stage when you look at stevie wonder fucking like old school people they were like 12 11 years yeah. fucking Mozart, that nigga was like nine years old or some shit. Right, like, come right. on, he was 32, he was living rock star dreams, and he did, he was gone. It was like, right. what, what is left? So it's like, I'm not saying I'm like some motherfucking yay version of genius of type shit, like where it's like, you gotta be like already like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, but it's like, damn, like, take the time to let the artist be an artist. Like, give them the space to create, to manifest, to figure this shit out. Because there's no insurance for hip hop. I was just saying that shit the other day. I it's wish it was, God damn it. And you see, uh, a few people said this before, but I know Sauce Walker said it the other day where he said people rather jam out of state artists rather than their own city. Yes. And that's a fact because you can go and ask anybody, even your friends, what artists are you listening to? They're not from Houston, from Atlanta, from Chicago. New York, New LA. York. Yeah. Exactly. It's like I'm trying to better my weather here. I'm trying to take LA. I've been saying this shit for like three years. I'm trying to take LA and Atlanta. And put that shit into Houston because I feel like Houston, Atlanta, Vegas, that should be, we should be doing Coachella's concerts. Yeah. We should be doing South by Southwest. What the fuck are we doing? Like, we did Super Bowl after Super Bowl. Like, we drained the Super Bowls. Like, we done did that shit already. So, that's why you got niggas like 50 Cent 
coming here trying to invest, trying to get on his gaming yeah, money because people see people, him. Know that. Exactly. You feel me? Aisha got it. Everybody really got like a little something out here. Little, yeah, it's a little, little hub. Yeah. Shaq. Shaq, Shaq, Shaq is up the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 like, Shaq exactly. is really, you know what I'm saying? So they, everybody, building into this industry of NFTs, that's another thing that I just want to touch on a little bit because people like see the marketability of Houston. They really do see that, oh shit, like this really Space City, Drip City, Houston. They, they really into this shit. So it's like, they, it's like almost like we give, because we're such a warm, like we want to give people that love, but at the same time, it's not really taught or ingrained. It's kind of like shit. You got that parent who's cool with everybody else's kids, but behind closed doors, they're like cussing your ass out and they saying some bullshit. It's like, what the fuck? Man? You treat other people's kids, man, you treat your own kids. That's how Houston kind of is. It's like, yeah, we, we treat you on the, uh, the weekends and holidays, but your birthdays, but it's like, what the fuck else is there left? Like, you just, in the wintertime, I'm gonna say like this in the winter time when my shit got cut off and nobody was really fucking with me. All y'all motherfuckers and I'm pointing to my phone because y'all want to mm-hmm. hit me up and shit. And it's like, yeah. like y'all wasn't really fucking with me when I was like broke. I ain't had not one Christmas present. Like I ain't had not Damn. one phone call. I ain't had like, and I don't think about sentimental shit like that because there's been plenty of Christmases where I know it's all shit. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, yeah, I, exactly. I'm at the wrong goddamn Christmas tree at the wrong <laughs> goddamn dinner table. Like what the fuck is going on? But it's like, damn, like. Barely like six weeks ago, like I went from like EBT to BET, so it's like yeah, it's I'm proud of myself. Exactly. Like it's pro- like you could do this shit and be like who you want to be. It doesn't matter. I'm not fucking, and that's why I'm saying like Houston has that international market. We got that market. It's just Definitely. we don't want to uh, invest the time. That's really the biggest thing. I could see Houston becoming the next LA. We have yeah. all the resources out here. I mean, we have traffic like in LA. You got traffic like it. Like, yeah, Chicago, yeah. LA, it's like the same thing. People tell me like, man, Chicago is not as bad as this. Like, how the fuck? I never been. How the fuck? I've been to LA, but how the fuck is exactly, this? Exactly. It's a very similarity. So I'm like, okay, well, y'all got subways and fucking trolleys and shit. So that makes it. <laughs> I guess. Like, yeah. soon, it was like we got the metro, baby. That shit is running all damn day. Like, all day. It's day. not. I've. I literally came from that nigga, like. Keep on fucking up. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it can't be on you. It got to be in you. Yeah, you right, feel me? And that's right. what I'm saying. Like, even earlier with the kids, like, the drip and the jury and the, the, the schlingo, the lingo. Y'all going to learn about that shit in the minute. But it's not all about that. It's all about the schmidget things that you saw yourself and you like, man, I was here last year. Man, I was here last year. Look at how I'm, like, stepping up exactly, the ladder, you know? Exactly. And that's the inspiration behind it. It's like, all right, I'm trying to, like manipulate time because time is on my side on some Rolling Stones. Like I'm trying to like manipulate where it's like I could sanction myself to be something of something to somebody else besides myself. Being an entity besides just the shit I see on TV. Because this this ain't just no love and hip hop bullshit. You know? I agree. It's I agree. life, man. It's real rap, real man, cat. Uh-